Hi there, Laura here, the founder of Get Organized HQ, and I'm so excited to talk to you all about this today. I don't know about you, but sometimes I get kind of in a productivity rut, or another thing that happens to me is I get really, really overwhelmed. Like I've got a trip coming up, and oh my goodness, I have 22 million things that feel like they have to get done before the trip, and then my normal productivity methods, they just stop working and they start stressing me out. So I have a method that I have used for years that works phenomenally. It's called the to-do list sticky note method. And I'm going to show you exactly how it works. And in addition to that, we have a brand new ultimate guide to sticky note productivity. So that guide is going to show you all different ways that you can actually use sticky notes to increase your productivity and make your life go smoother. And what I love about this is it's super fun. Like sticky notes, they're colorful. They come in all different shapes and sizes. They're also very visual. So if you are someone who really needs that visual clue, cue for yourself to be productive. This will help you a ton and it's just so satisfying. Like I get to move the sticky note from like the to do to done and I can visually see my progress and that is a huge boost. So I'm going to go ahead and dive in and share with you how I use this method and if you're interested be sure to check out the sticky note productivity guide linked below so you can see all of the methods. I'm getting ready to use this method for myself right now because I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed. I've had a lot going on. I'm just now recovering from surgery. I got behind. I feel like, oh my goodness, there's so much to do. And so I'm going to use this method and I'm going to take you along with me. So the first thing that I do is I write down, um, this is one of my little mini notebooks. It doesn't really matter what you use. I'm going to write down a brain dump of all the things that I have to do and get it out of my head. Now you could go straight to the sticky notes for this, but I find it easier to write it down ahead of time because one of the things that's going to be really, really critical is prioritizing. And that's easier to do if you have everything out on a list. So this is not the time to edit yourself. This is not the time to think, what is the priority? Do I really need to do this? It's not the time to worry about how you're going to get it done. This is the time to sit there and like, all right. And I usually like to give this a time frame. So this is not open ended. So for me, this is going to be everything that I want to get done before Monday of next week. So just this particular week, it's early in the week. Sometimes I will do it for a longer chunk of time, especially if I have a trip. So a couple weeks before a trip is coming up where I'm gone for like a whole week, these are the things I need to get done before then. So I'm just going to go ahead and I am going to start writing here everything that comes to mind. I mix work and personal. So like if I know I need to do laundry or um, go thaw something from the refrigerator or make a meal plan or everything that's work related, I'm just going to write it all down. So now I have the list of everything that I know I need to do. It, at this point, it looks a little overwhelming. It's just like this big list. So we're going to do the next step, which is prioritizing it on my sticky notes. So the next step is prioritizing. You can either do it directly on the sticky notes, like you're going to write it on the color of priority of sticky note that you have, or you can like kind of put, make a column or put right next to each item what the priority is and then write it on the sticky notes. It doesn't really matter uh, which way you do it, whatever is more comfortable to you. And this is my own prioritization system. I give things a P1 top priority, P1.5, that's very close to the top priority, but not quite there, a P2, which is second, and P3, which is third. So I have four levels. You can make this work however you want, whatever works for your brain. I think most normal people would probably just do priority one, two, and three. But for me, I really need that one and a half. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make a color key out of these. So I'm going to pick uh, which four colors I want to use. Um, so here's what I want to do. I want to use this one is going to be top priority because it's the darkest. And then this lighter pink is going to be priority 1.5. That means it's really close to it. Then I'm going to go with um, this one is going to be priority two and this color is going to be priority three. And so I make myself a little key where I just write on here priority one. And then I know that this color is priority one. I take the next one and I write the next priority because we don't uh, want to get confused. Like we don't want to have to waste our brain power figuring out what was what. So I make myself a little key, I stack it up, and then I usually tape it on the wall near this where I'm going to use this system. 
And so that way I can see it both when I'm making the list and assigning priorities. And again, once it's in place, I'm going to be able to easily see the priorities. Now, when I hang these on the wall, a lot of times because sticky notes are sticky at the top and they kind of flip up, I will actually use washi tape to kind of secure it. And, and this can stay in place for a long time. Like you can use this same priority key over and over again. All right, so now you have your priority color coding in place and you're ready to put your tasks on the sticky notes. So you're gonna go task by task. You're just gonna start with the first item on your list and you're gonna say, what priority is this? Now, let me tell you what you're gonna to wanna to do that you should avoid. You're gonna to wanna to make basically everything priority one because you didn't write it down if you didn't wanna actually get it done. So our temptation is to feel like everything is a top priority. This is a huge mistake because you can't do everything. And if everything is a priority, you've heard this, nothing is a priority. So that's actually why I give myself that one, that very top priority and that 1.5 just under that. So for me, the things that are priority one are the things that like absolutely have to get done and there will be like literal negative consequences to not getting them done. It doesn't mean that I just really, really wish I could get it done or I will get behind if I don't get it done. This means like something actually bad will happen. So the things that I would assign to priority one are things like paying a bill when it's going to be due late. So if it wasn't gonna be late for another month, that's not a priority yet. But if it's gonna actually be late, I'm gonna incur a late fee. Or for example, you know, I release videos every Wednesday on my channel. Like something actually, like people are expecting it. I wouldn't have a, a newsletter to send out. So if I'm so behind on filming videos that if I don't do it, like in this time period, we're not gonna have a video, that's when it's a priority one. But if it's just like, I really wanna stay on the schedule of filming two videos a week so I can get ahead, that's a priority 1.5. The consequences, I'll get pretty far behind and it will have far reaching consequences if I don't get it done, but it doesn't absolutely have to be done. Another example is like paying taxes. If it's February and you just wanna get your taxes done, that's great, but that's still not a priority one. But if it's April 10th, absolutely a priority one. So you see the difference in the one and the 1.5 is the one is like must do this and the 1.5 is really would like to do this. Like I, I really wanna see all the priority ones and 1.5 done before I go. And most of the time it is possible to get that done. Then the priority two is all the things that like, yeah, it really would be great to do this, but there's not gonna be all that much of a consequence if I don't. So if I'm trying to get like more ahead on something or there's some things that I'm not even 100% sure if I really even need to do those things. Like, do I really need to, you know, dust under my bed? I mean, I, I, I guess, but like, there's not gonna be any huge consequence in any way whatsoever. It's not really gonna be harder to do it if I do it in a month. So that would probably be something in the second priority. And then the third priority is just things that are just, just more of a nice to do, but again, no big deal. And a lot of these are things that if I don't do them, I don't do them later, I just never do them. For example, let's say that I wanted to help my kids make homemade Valentine's for their class. And after Valentine's Day happens, we're not doing that anymore. So the alternative is instead of spending, you know, three hours making these elaborate homemade Valentine's, we go to the store and we spend 20 minutes and we buy them. So that thing just goes away. It would be like a nice to do, or maybe I wanted to make another piece. I love making um, homemade chalk decor for my house. So maybe I wanna make, I actually do, I really wanna make this uh, really cute bunny uh, for Easter. And when I'm filming this, it is March, so Easter's coming up. That, that's a priority three, because really, absolutely no one will even know that I didn't do it if I don't get it done. And again, if Easter passes and it's not done, then it's just not happening. So those are kind of the priority three. I also would not stress very much about a two or three. Go with your gut, but it's not gonna be that vitally important to the system, whether you've got those categorized perfectly. The thing that I would worry about, like I said, is not to make every single thing a top priority. All right, so at this point, you've taken your sticky notes and you have written everything on them, every single item. So each sticky note gets one item. So one thing that you have to do. So for example, one of my goals for this week is I want to record three more podcasts for my second business, Get Profitable HQ. I do not put record three podcasts on one sticky note. Instead, I put record a podcast or record podcast number one is one sticky note. Record podcast number two is another and re record podcast number three is another because you wanna break it down into chunks so that you see progress. Because what I don't wanna have happen, what if I did two? Do I get to move that sticky note to the done? 
not really. So you want to chunk, break it down. So if you want to do something where it's like uh, walk three times, maybe you want to walk three times, you know, walk a mile three times this week. Walk one mile would be one sticky. Walk the second mile would be another. So you're going to break it down like that. So make sure that each sticky only contains one to do. Then this is the really fun part. You're just going to get to put them up on the wall, uh, kind of like this. So I just put them up on the wall. I, you can use whatever order you want. I tend to uh, mix them up a little bit so I don't have like all priority one and all priority one and a half. I just kind of lay them out, mix them up. Now, if you want to add some more structure, like for example, let's say that you think you're going to do these things on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday, you, you could lay it out like that. That's totally fine. But however you want, and then it looks very fun and motivating. So you're going to have everything in a grid and these are the things that you still need to do. Then you're going to draw, it doesn't have to be a literal line, mine's just an imaginary line, for the done side. And this is what's really fun. As you do each item, you're going to take the sticky note from the to-do side and you're just going to move it over to the done side. And over time, you're going to see this done side growing and the to-do to side shrinking. And that's what's really fun and visual and motivating about it because you can like literally see what you need to do and you can literally see yourself making the progress as you go and it's very self-motivating and visual. This would also be great to try with your kids. I'm actually gonna do it with my kids uh, this summer to try, kind of uh, see how they like it because it's so visual. One other thing that's fairly important is I don't do this in a running to-do list sort of way. So what I'm not doing is I'm not constantly adding to it. Now, again, if that system works for you and you wanna do it that way, I'm all for it. I'm all for what works for you, but for me, that's not as motivating because it just continues to grow and then it never ends. So instead, the only time I would really add to it is if there's something I forgot that's literally like, I really do need to do that and I just forgot. But other than that, I'm not gonna just like continuously add to it. I'm gonna set a chunk of time. So what I would do is I would do it for this week and then I would wipe the slate clean and I would do it for next week if I wanted to do it for next week, for example. Basically, using this system, what's important to understand is that like literally never have I moved everything from the to-do to done because the only way I would do that is if I was truly only putting those first priorities. When I'm putting those lower priorities, of course, I'm not getting it all done and that's not the goal. So I don't want you to think that, that the goal is I must get everything done or I'm a failure because that's not the goal. The goal is just to kind of see what's going on. And then when I get to the end of the time period, I usually try to wipe the slate clean. So I'll take all the stickies down and then if I do want to reuse them, if like this thing is still there and it's still the same priority, great, I'll put it back up. But a lot of times by the time I do the next one, my priorities have shifted. So something that was a three may now be a one. So I kind of wipe this slate clean and start from scratch, but I'll look at the stickies that I already have to be like, do I need to add this to my brain dump? Is this something I still need to do? Um, so that's kind of how I structure it. Again, you make it yours, but that's what works for me. If you like this method, you are absolutely gonna love our ultimate guide to sticky note productivity. It shows you this system all written out with like pictures of everything and alternate methods and all of that, plus six additional systems that you can use with sticky notes. So I highly encourage you to click the link below and go check that out and then come back and let me know in the comments kind of how you use sticky notes and if you think this method will work for you.